If you want to build big, rounded shoulders with your body weight only, the handstand push-up is your exercise. Okay, I'm sure now you're thinking, thanks dude, but I'm 100% won't be able to do this exercise. Actually, you don't have to do the way you see it. You can build great shoulders with some way easier progressions that you can build up the same way as a simple push-up. So don't worry, this video will be really beginner friendly and I'm sure it will help you a lot. Many coaches agree that if you want to build big, rounded shoulders, one of the key exercises is some kind of overhead press like the military press and the handstand push-up is the equivalent of this but with body weight. This exercise requires great shoulder strength since you need to move your whole body weight using mainly your delts. The main muscle working is the deltoid muscle, especially the anterior part of it, but the upper part of your chest and the triceps also work, not to mention the core and the other stabilizing muscles. I personally think that the movement pattern of the handstand push-up must be done by everyone, so it's worth to reach a given level of progression, same as you can do push-ups or squats. But, contrary to other exercises, I don't recommend to do it right away. It's worth to have some preparations and basics before you start. Let's see what are those. Before doing handstand push-up progressions, I recommend to do a thorough upper body joint preparation. Many people who skip this part have wrist pain, elbow pain or shoulder pain while doing simple push-ups, so you can imagine how much load these joints get in the handstand push-ups. The right shoulder flexion mobility is particularly important, so essentially you need to be able to raise your arms next to your ears with externally rotated upper arms. If this is not good enough, even your handstand won't be good enough and this exercise will be more risky in terms of injuries. As always, the best if you do joint preparation based on a thorough system, if you need help with that, just click the link below and get started. In terms of basics, the push-ups and dips are prerequisites, it's worth to strengthen your pushing structure before you jump right into the handstand push-ups. Many people say the handstand is a prerequisite, which is not necessarily true. For the beginner progressions that are low intensity, you don't need to be able to do handstand. Of course, after a certain level, you can't avoid it, but you can't get started without it if you don't plan to get on higher levels. One more thing about the handstand as a prerequisite. If your goal is to do freestanding handstand push-ups, then yes, you definitely need the freestanding handstand. If you only want to do handstand push-ups at the wall, the wall handstand is perfectly enough. So I would distinguish between the beast mode, gymnast style training, freestanding handstand push-uppers and the people who just want to develop their upper body strength thoroughly and build strong shoulders. For the second one, you don't need to struggle with the freestanding handstand, which I guess is a relief for many people. From here, you just need to build up the strength the same way as you did with the other exercises. The handstand push-up is no different compared to others, even if it looks pretty advanced and scary. Let's see what is the right technique and how should you build it up. First of all, it's important to try and understand the right technique. I will talk about the full range of motion execution that many people consider as a negative handstand push-up, but in reality, that's the full range of motion and the floor handstand push-up is only half range of motion. Raise your arms up, elevate your scapulas and shoulders and keep your elbows locked. As I mentioned in the prerequisites, you need to rotate your arms out, so do external rotation of the humerus, which is one of the keys of the right technique. If you turn it in, then your elbows will flare out in the handstand push-up, which is improper execution and risky. Just try the two movements and you will feel immediately that doing it without rotated arms just feels more natural. From this comes the next important key point. Bend your elbows tucked in next to your body, same as in a regular push-up or dip. The previous point will naturally lead you here, but if you pay extra attention to it, it will help you even more. This is not only better mechanically, but will work your muscles even more and will be easier to balance. I can't tell you how much it matters when I'm doing the handstand push-ups, my reps are more stable. It's not a coincidence, since if you master the shoulder stand earlier, the lower end point will feel like a resting position. The point is that because of the arm position, your head will move forward, which means if you do it on the floor, you need to imagine a regular triangle and your head should go to its top. The more your head and hands are in line at the lower end point, the more your elbows will flare out, which will be more uncomfortable, risky and hard to maintain the balance. Your scapula should follow the movement smoothly, you need to elevate them at the upper end point and depress them at the lower end point. This is why the scapular prehab is important, because without those, you'll have a hard time. So the two main key points are the external rotated arms and the tucked in elbows at the lower end point. This is how you need to do the handstand push-ups in every progression you do. And now, let's see how to build it up. 
You might think that in the progressions there is an extra magic you need to do differently, but this is not the case. You need to do the technique I've mentioned before and the point is to increase the intensity carefully and gradually. This is why progressions are useful because it doesn't work like in weight training, you put an extra plate on and that's it. As with other bodyweight exercises, you need to change the body position here as well to add more intensity. Well, many people are not aware of the progressions, so now let's see the most effective ones in order of difficulty. In general, if you can complete three sets of the reps I mentioned, you'll be able to move on to the next progression. First of all, you can start doing handstand push-ups with supporting on the wall and do up to 30 reps. In the second progression, you can do it on the floor in kneeling, where you won't be able to get into the handstand-like position, but the intensity will be much lower. You can do 20 to 30 reps before you move on. In the third progression, you can still work in kneeling support, but now on an elevated surface, so you can get closer to a handstand-like position and have more intensity. 15 to 20 reps is a great goal before you move on. The fourth progression is the pike handstand push-up on the floor, which will be a bit more intensive. 15 reps is a good goal before you step to the next progression. The fifth progression is the elevated leg handstand push-up, where the intensity will be close to the real handstand push-up. Here, 10 to 12 reps is a good goal before you move on. The sixth progression is the handstand push-up negatives facing the wall, which is a great transition between the previous and the full handstand push-ups. Five reps is a good goal before you move on, but at the same time, you might be able to do full reps right away. The seventh progression is also a great transition for those who can't do the concentric part, which honestly, pretty close to impossible if you've done the previous progressions right. In the tuck headstand to handstand, you need to dynamically kick up with your legs and push yourself at the same time with your arms in front of the wall. Five to eight reps is a good goal before you move on. The eighth progression is the same as the previous one, but without the kick, it's a headstand to handstand pushing. Five reps is a good goal before you move on. The ninth progression is the handstand push-up from pike bent arm handstand in front of the wall. This progression is harder than the previous one because you need to hold your body without the head support in the bent arm position and push up from there. Three to five reps is a good goal before you step to the next progression. The tenth and last progression is the handstand push-up facing the wall. In this position, you can maintain the best body position more easily with keeping your core tight, contracting your abs and glutes, maintaining posterior pelvic tilt. Can you practice it against the wall? Of course you can. Here's a tip for that. Bend your knees and support on the wall with your feet. Like this, you'll be able to maintain the right pelvis position and not over arch your back. Although in my experience, if you get through some of the progressions, especially the basic ones, you'll be able to do handstand push-ups facing the wall and pay attention to the key points. The five to 10 reps is a great goal from the full handstand push-ups. If your goal is the freestanding handstand push-up, you can do some of the progressions without the wall, for example, the negatives, the headstand progressions, or the bent arm pike progression. I encourage you to do the progressions you can on medium parallels in full range of motion so you can get the most out of this exercise. As you see, you don't need to be afraid of this exercise because there are many beginner progressions that can be mastered by anyone with the right basics. Give them a try and incorporate the handstand push-up progressions into your workouts as part of your shoulder training and build big round shoulders. And if you want to build a shredded physique like Gymnast Set from Zero, following my thorough system specifically, just click the link below, sign up today and get access to all of my programs, tutorials, series and much more. I can also help you personally in the private community in the live Q&As. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did so, please like, share and write a comment what do you want to see in the next videos. If you don't want to miss the new videos, subscribe, hit notifications on and see you next week in the next video.